Maria Parsons goes from door to door, trying to get a handle on just how sick her neighbors are. Day and night, it's uh, going around the neighborhood, talking to neighbors, trying to get the information. My neighbor there, she has cancer. The gentleman that lived in the house died of cancer. Across the street is cancer. The other house next door to that was cancer death, it was a sale. The house that I live in, it was a uh, pancreatic cancer death. Parsons' neighborhood is in Gainesville, Florida, and it's next door to what was an industrial site, including a recently closed wood treatment facility. In the groundwater and soil, toxic metals like arsenic and chromium, organic carcinogens like benzene and dioxins. They are often called the most toxic substance known. The 170-acre site is a federal Superfund site. That means the government considers it one of America's most toxic places. Superfund began 30 years ago with grand hopes and high expectations that some of America's most toxic sites would be cleaned up and that the communities, like the Parsons community, would be protected. As many people know, Congress passed the Superfund law after a catastrophe shocked the nation. This is the second time Love Canal has been declared an emergency area. Lois Gibbs was a 27-year-old housewife at Love Canal. She and other residents had no idea the community was built on 20,000 tons of buried chemicals. What happened? I bought my American dream. I bought my house with a picket fence and then my kids got sick. My son Michael developed asthma, epilepsy, a urinary tract disorder which required two surgeries to correct, a liver problem, an immune system problem like you see in, in um, HIV victims. And then I gave birth to Melissa and she had this rare blood disease. The government relocated Gibbs and her kids eventually recovered. Gibbs now runs a Center for Health, Environment and Justice. It's a nonprofit dedicated to helping communities facing environmental risks, like Love Canal. Has Superfund been effective? Do you believe that it's actually made a difference? It has made a difference because hundreds of sites have been cleaned up, people have been protected, people have gotten new drinking water, and communities, you know, over 14 communities have been evacuated because of Superfund and with Superfund money. In Gainesville, Michael and Maria Parsons aren't seeing any of it. This Gainesville site made the Superfund list almost as soon as the law was passed. It's still being cleaned up 27 years later. A Superfund site means that it's designated because it is highly contaminated. It means that it needs to be cleaned up. We took the Parsons story to the man who runs EPA's Superfund program, Maddie Stanislaus. The, the, the community residents should be angry for how long uh, it's going on and how long they've been waiting for the cleanup. I can't speak to the history of decisions made in the past, but my commitment and the commitment of the administrator is to move forward as expeditiously as possible on all the sites that we have. There's still plenty of work in Gainesville. Take a look at this, the most recent EPA review of the Gainesville site. Attempts to keep contaminated groundwater on the property ineffective. The level of dioxins and other toxins inside our properties are just unacceptable. Maria and Michael Parsons say they can't afford to leave. No one's going to buy their house but they worry the health risks are so high they can't afford to stay either. Dr. Sanjay Gupta, CNN, reporting.